13, which I love because uh, <laughs> there's so many weird things going on here. Welcome to Scorch's PFG TV. Yeah! Okay, now I'm going to explain this again because, and Mike, I'm going to throw you under the bus. Run me away, okay? Bro. This is take two because the whole thing is the show is done online and it's done through the internet. Mm -hmm. So when the internet is not working, we never gave it, even thought about that. What happens if the internet goes down? How do we do the show? So we can still do the same show. We're just taping the show today, and we're running it either a little bit later or we're running it the next day, which would be Thursday, whatever day you're watching it. Yep. Uh, now, the reason I say it's take two is because, Mike, we're in the middle of it. We're having a fun time. All the crowd, That's great awesome. crowd. Yeah! You guys are great. Yeah! Mike said, stop. <laughs> what do you mean, stop? Uh, I forgot to press record. <laughs> so, uh, but you know what? Uh, Mike Snow, Mike Snow behind the board. Mike Snow at the controls. Give it up for Mike. Our champion. And you all know our pal Holly Hall, right? Before we go any further, I want to say, we want to say thank you. Last week at this time, when the show was starting out, we had just over 990 subscribers yep. to the Scorches PFG TV YouTube channel. Yep. Just, I think it was 992. Yeah, something like that. Well, as of showtime today, we are at 1,700 subscribers. We got 800 awesome. subscribers in a week. That's insane. Uh, and the videos are getting more views now than they've <laughs> ever gotten. I don't know what clicked in you guys, but... Uh, wow, it's got sunny. That's nice. But thank you guys for checking out Scorch's PFG TV. Yeah. Share yeah. the link with your friends. Uh, share the show with your friends. Share the link with your friends. And share the love. And again, starting next week, the only thing that we're going to miss this week that we couldn't do is the chat room. Yep. Because the chat room was just the best thing in the it world. It is the best. You guys, so we love so you guys. Uh, some of you guys, I wish I was as clever as some of you guys. Me and Mike were talking how quick these guys could just, they could rip the crap out of us, just like that. Yeah. And, and it's amazing. So we're going to miss you guys this I'm week. Sorry. I think you'll be able to leave comments in the videos, though. So yep. feel free to leave the comments in the videos. And I promise you we'll be back next week live, uh, as long as the internet doesn't stop. Okay. Yeah. So uh, welcome to Scorch's PFG TV. Holly, oh, you all know Holly. Give it up for Holly. <laughs> This week, we've got our pub crawl on yes. Friday. Friday started at 6 o'clock at night with our pal Sean Sam yes. of, a, of a right way shuttle. We're going to be doing, uh, we got what, five stops, I think it is? Yeah, five or six. So yeah, it's, five, it, six. it's going to be good. Yep. And we have somebody driving the bus, so you can, mm -hmm. and also because it's tavern league, yep. they have the, uh, safe. the, the safe, the, what's it called? Safe ride. Safe ride, yes. Yep. So. Depending on which town you're in, it's a little, name's a little different, but it's the same concept. And Holly spent the day in the hospital with your boy, I right? I did. I was in Marshfield a couple, yeah, hour and a half away with my poor. He had to get an endoscopy. Which is what? Goes the camera down the throat. So thankfully it wasn't the other way. Cause yeah, but no, one quick eoceliac disease. Mike is wincing because he had once. He said he had both at the same time. Oh, what? Can you imagine that? How about Ugh, that? Having like ew. having two different cameras with two different angles at the two different holes in your life. Oh, it's got to be just nasty. I've done both, but at separate times. So he just got all of so it. So did they give him drugs to keep happy? Oh, 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 you were out, yeah. Oh, no doubt. Did they give him drugs? They gave him ketamine, or ketamine, right? Ketamine? That, ke yeah, ketamine, ketamine. When it, I said it, it sounded wrong for some isn't reason. Isn't that a weird kind of like tripping? They said it's real quick and he just, it was so nice to watch his wow. eyes just kind of melt wow. into this. And he was like, this is really good. I was like, yeah, enjoy that. Like mother, like son. He's like, ah, I've mother, never done ketamine. Mother's like, can I get, <laughs> mother French kissed him just to get a secondhand buzz from the drug. <laughs> I'm not going to respond to that. We have a quite the show today because we've got something totally different. Today, we're going to flash back to, I believe it was 2013, to Scorch's PFG TV where we were in Southern California. Today, the band that we've got playing the show is called Symbolic from San Diego, California. Give it up for Symbolic. Yeah. I don't even think they're together anymore, but what a great show and what a great uh, band. Also, speaking of bands, John and Northwoods Rock Rally. John from Northwoods. Well, let's give him proper, because I know he might be an egomaniac. So, John Kaiser from Northwoods Rock Rally. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know what he's got in store. Honest to God, I swear, I don't know what he's got in store. Um, can, but he I'm said excited. he's got something in store mid-show that I can't wait to see what he's going to have for us. So we've got that. We've got a funny story. Do you remember? I think I might have told the story about Barry last week, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, I never told the story? Okay, we were at one of our family members, J&E Meats, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was picking up meat for the Wheel of Meat. And, uh, and I saw this license plate, and I said, wow, that's a Jewish name. <laughs> and no, I mean, it, it's a fact. And me being a kosher kid, and I'm the only kosher kid in this area, I thought, I said, I walked in to J&E Meats, one of our family members that sponsored the Wheel of Meats, and I said, I hear him talking to them about matzo ball soup which most people call chicken soup with matzo balls, but some people call it matzo ball soup. I heard matzo balls. I said, oh, my God, there's another kosher person here. And we and him started talking. He's part of the upper Midwest. Uh, the, it's, he works with dyslexia. What's the, what's, the, what's it called? Children's Dyslexia Center of Upper Wisconsin. Children's Dyslexia Center of Upper Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to talk to them because, you know what, not everything on this show is a F up and a laughter thing. Just some serious stuff. And that's great stuff that we it want is. to talk about. Because mm -hmm. these guys do really good work. So we're going to talk to them. Frankie. Frankie Morelli. So excited. We had the chance to interview. His name is Frankie Spice Morelli. Yep. He has a book out. And it's, a, it's an Italian cookbook. He started putting it together when he was in jail because he was also in the mafia, in the mob. We're going to have a Frankie on here via Zoom in just a little bit. Right now, let's start things off with our f up Facts. Shall we do that? Thank you. f up Facts, yeah. brought to you by Common Collected Cannabis Company in Chippewa Falls. They are the official cannabis company, the official CBD company in Chippewa of Scorch's PFG TV. I gotta, we got to stop in there. We you know have what? to. If we're on the road tomorrow, we're going to stop in. We need to. Yes, we'll stop. She already brought that up three times, said Mike. It. Breakfast, please. Oh, my God. And Chickadees, by the way, will be here next week. So, uh, uh, No, no, no. Give it back up for Common Collected Cannabis Company. Yeah. <laughs> They've got it all. I love their shop. I tell them every time. I'm just going to say to you guys, go in and check them out, and you'll agree. Holy crap. What a cool freaking shop. Uh, you have all their information at scorchonline.com. Also, we want to thank Wicked Sweet Bake Shop in Kadat. Give it up for Wicked oh, Sweet. Yeah. Hey, man, man. Oh. I'm going to start today with Wicked Sweet's cheesecakes. I was looking at their cheesecake menu. So they have lemon cheesecake, raspberry swirl, strawberry swirl, chocolate swirl. They have crunchy oh. cheesecakes. They, can, mm. they had a vanilla cheesecake I saw that they posted the other mm -hmm. day. I believe they only make a few a day. Really? And, and if it's gone, it's gone. Done. They also, I want to bring up very quickly, it's getting to be Father's Day. If you're going to have a Father's Day barbecue or Father's Day picnic, why don't you get some breads and rolls from our pals at Wicked Sweet Bake Shop in Kedah. Thank you. A recent study found 73% of people sleep with their smartphone. Yeah. You sleep right next to your phone? Not next to it. But you sleep with your phone? Not with it either. Yeah. Oh, I keep it down your pants? No, I have one of those cords that are like this long. So yeah, I have one of those cords that's about this so long. So it's too. kind of a waste. Yeah. So then, yeah. I, then, I, then I know I'll get up because I have to get out of bed to shut my alarm off. So it actually works out good for me. That's one of my worst sleep. things is that I'm instantly, I have a friend of mine that does part of the show with me. He's a partner of mine on the show. Uh, you guys know Mike Snow? Give it up for Mike Snow. Yeah. His romance. Mike friends. and I, no, Mike and I, neither one of us sleep. And, uh, and so I, I may have, uh, true, are we not talking business at 4.30, almost yes. there? So, so yeah, I should not keep my phone next to my bed, but I keep, my, I have in order toothpicks. Some of them are already used, but that's Weird. okay. I don't care about that. It's hey, yours. sometimes it's in yours. the middle of the night, my ear itches. So I grab a toothpick, stick it in my ear. Don't people, did people used to like put their gummy and then, in there? Then I thing? know the next morning after I get up, if I pick the wrong toothpick, uh, oh, this is an ear oh, toothpick. Uh, Gee, damn it. Uh, uh, but it goes to my toothpicks, and then I have a bottle of water, and my phone, and any number of roaches, blunts, <laughs> a pipe, and all sorts of paraphernalia. So, what do you have on your nightstand? <laughs> I'm still trying to get over it. I have a lamp, um, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> some pens and pencils, and all the good stuff are in the drawers, not on top of it. Batteries? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's in the drawer. 
What? So do you get to keep that in the drawer? Everything is in the drawer. I have three kids. I have to hide everything in the drawer. I mean, they are old, getting older, but so obviously I'm still at least three different the drawers. nights you kept that thing in the drawer. <laughs> it's always in the drawer. <laughs> Not those three nights it wasn't. Everything's in the drawer. Fifty-five percent of a. What did you say? <laughs> oh, that's true. Thank you. Two nights because she had twins. Uh, Fifty-five percent of uh, of Americans say they keep a roll of toilet paper in their car. Most of yeah. those people are coming to this show because they needed to wipe after this show. I have one in my bag right now. Toilet paper? Yes. Yeah, I don't keep toilet but I like to keep napkins. Toilet paper I don't keep I in my I do car. have toilet paper in there right now. Here we go. I don't know who's, where this figure comes from. 717 bucks a year, the average dog cost for an owner. 717 Mike's got three dogs. I'll guarantee he's paying more than 717 because I've got Tongo the Beast. I'm paying probably seven seventeen every three months. That's they said a year. A year. Yes. Yep. I, yeah. There's no way the dogs all all scrawny and anorexic. Yeah. That doesn't it's, make any it's sense. It's one of the all these all these dogs for this uh, survey are the ones on those uh, 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 Sarah McLaughlin oh, commercials. They're like this big in the little purse. Buy a dog, please. <laughs> you know, Sarah, why don't you stop pushing the thing and put all your money into it yeah. and get these dogs out of hawk? That's the thing to do, right? Don't you guys agree? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my problems. Tell I hate I hate when these actresses and actors say, hey, you know, it's only 16 cents a day. Well, you know what? You have so much money. You can afford to get every dog out of every shelter in America. I don't Absolutely. want to hear it. Uh, a survey asked people to name the best ever board game. The number one answer was Monopoly. Monopoly. Are you a fan of Monopoly? I am. There's yeah. so many different versions of yeah. it now. Yeah. There's like, there's a weed monopoly game. I know that. I think it's called Potopoly. Every, no, no, I, I do. Every city, in mostly bigger cities on God's green earth, has a version of Monopoly for their city. I got the millennial version just to spite my kids. It is the worst because you don't, it's not the same. You're not winning, like all the things. The point, no, not in this game. In this one, the point is not to win all the money and get all the things. The point is to have as, as many experiences as you can. My kids were like, burn it. We're never playing it again. Uh, worst, and that's actually on the board. It shows him wearing a participation award. It just. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> Mike, you're, you're going to like this, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, another fun story from Holly O'Connor. <laughs> you asked me, you know, what you, you know what you're going to get. You asked me a question and I'm following through. Sorry. Uh, and finally, I don't think this is you, but you're not the average chick by any means. No, The average not. woman will own 111 purses in Never. her lifetime. No, nope, not me. What, do, what is the thing you own the most? What's the most, let's change this around. What's the most girly thing that, that, tell us that about That I own Holly. the most, well, no, Tell us the most girly thing about Holly. I did hair for 13 years, so I'm good at doing hair and makeup and things of that nature, just not for myself that much, but I still will. Dresses, yeah, yeah. dresses. Yeah, you wear dresses. I do wear dresses, and so. You're gonna wear one With, today. like, skate forgot. shoes. Yeah. I left it in the car that I went to the, Clinic and yeah. Do you wear drawers with the with your with your dresses? Do you wear underwear? On this show, I will, Why? but otherwise, no. You don't wear underwear. Your dresses? I never wear underwear. There you go. Anybody else go us go a commando order? I bet you. I'm gonna call this right now. I bet you Barry from the dyslexia place. I bet you he goes commando sometimes. I bet you. I bet you he runs around his house making matzo balls, which we're gonna talk about. All in the raw. We'll all in ask. the buff. We'll Barry's matzo balls are, are, are competing, are competing with the stove's matzo balls. <laughs> hey, uh, those are today's f up facts. Thank you guys. Give it up for f up facts. <laughs> Thanks to Mad Computer family members, Mad Computer, Mike Decker, Mad Computer Services LLC. Uh, they have refurbs and they have great deals on refurbs. If you're looking for anything like that, you'll get to get your computer cleaned out. Mad Computer, Computer Services, LLC would be the thing. Uh, go talk to Mike Decker and say, hey, tell Scorch sent you. Also, we want to say hey to Shilka Flooring. Uh, give it up for Shilka. I love you, Dan. <laughs> Shilka Flooring. It was funny. Somebody uh, last week on the chat room, I brought up Shilka flooring and somebody said, I gotta make sure I can get Shilka flooring. You know what? I bet you, even if you're out of state, I bet you if you paid Dion a little fee, he would come set up a floor at your place. Seriously. If he knew that you saw him on this show, 
He will give you a deal. You, you fly or pay for his company to come in, he'll give you a deal on the floor. Shoka Flooring, thank you, Dion. Thanks, and Dion. Chris Powell Real Estate. Chris Powell, a diner real estate. Chris, he answered our Facebook feedback question about the car. The first car he bought and how much he paid for it. Chris is an amazing real estate agent. He's going to be back on again in a couple of weeks yeah, as well. Wait. Because what I love about Chris is he got to talk to us about basically anything you needed to know mm -hmm. about buying and selling a house. Mm -hmm. And there's more to it than a lot of people think. There's a lot less to it than a lot of people think, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. So Chris, we're looking forward to having you back on again. And yes, Chickadee's Family Restaurant. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Holly already today said approximately 13 times, we are going to be Chickadee's for breakfast. We're going to be Chickadee's for breakfast. I am hoping that next week, uh, Don and Brent, when they're coming in to be the mm -hmm. featured family member of the week, I am hoping that they will bring breakfast in for you and, and, and me, you, me, and Mike. And then that'll be like us having breakfast there. And I hope you'll so. shut up. I've been waiting. You'll shut oh, up? Yeah. I went What's without. That? So everyone can see. Yeah, we'll have to have it on the air, right? No I went doubt. without him, so I had lunch because I wanted to have breakfast with you guys. By the way, for those wondering who I'm talking to off this camera here, and you don't know the show yet. That's our boy, Mike Snow. Give it up yeah. for Mike. It's our champ. Oh, speaking of that, before we get any further, Mike, I suppose I should probably apologize to Puds, huh? Yes. Okay. Last Ooh. week in the chat room, there was somebody that posted something. His name was Puds. And he said... He said something about this show that he actually meant really nicely, but I took it wrong. I, myself, my wrestling character, and, and Steroid Stew all came out at the same time, and I lambasted poor Puds. Puds Aww. actually responded and said, no, I really meant it. You guys went out and taped a drink with Holly. To put that kind of effort in, I bet you guys are starting to put a lot more effort into the show. And I was just so puds. I'm sorry, brother or sorry. sister, if you're a girl. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I apologize. You rock, puds. Thank you for checking wow. out the show. Wow, that was so nice of you. Sure. This is a fun question. Everybody loves and remembers the first, pretty much everything. Your first car that you bought yourself. Everybody remembers the first car they bought themselves, and they remember how much they paid for it. Mm -hmm. First car you bought yourself, what was it? 87 Nissan Stanza for 1100 bucks. 87 Nissan yep. Stanza. Mike Snow, what'd you get? 
What do you got? 1964 Ford Fairlane, $100. 64 Ford Fairlane. dollars I had a 67 Olds Cutlass Supreme. That Dang. was that was red. Red? It was red. Killer wow. Kowalski, when I was training in pro wrestling, Killer Kowalski was a superstitious old fella. God damn it, Jesus Christ, you don't do anything. You, you don't wear red on my shows. And don't you bought that red car, you will never drive me to a show. Uh, two days after I bought the car, I hit a big light pole. And I told you so. Did How many days? I told you. So he, it, it's a red car. How many uh, days did you do uh, it? This is just about two or three days after. Dang. Listen to this. Uh, Mike Decker. Mike from Mad Computer Services, LLC. Yeah. Yeah. We love Mike. 1978 Dodge Challenger. Dang. Mike was, Mike's, he, he, you can tell Mike's a groovy guy. Mike was grooving yeah. back then. He's like, look at me, I'm Mike Decker. Oh, yeah. I'm driving around my Dodge Challenger. Good for him. Yeah. Jimmy D. Now, Jimmy D is listening and viewing in Nashua, New Hampshire. Oh. The story with Jimmy D, before I get into his car, we told this story on the show a couple of weeks ago. I did, I was working at a radio station in New Hampshire. We were giving away a brand new Ford Mustang. Brand new, I believe it was, I don't even want to get into 93 maybe, might have even been before that. Wow. We picked James, whatever his last name is. Oh, it was all happy. He didn't come. We gave him another try. James, blah, 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 blah. come pick up your car. Blah, blah, blah. Third try, didn't come. Picked another name. The other person won the car. Jimmy D comes running out of the bathroom. Oh, shit. <laughs> But Jimmy D didn't get that car, but he had a 1976 Buick Skylark. Wow. Everybody remember the Skylark? Yeah. That's, I love this question because it brings back memories. Memories, Nicole for sure. was gifted a 1970 Mercury Cougar. Now, if you remember these cars, you remember this. It was a brown car, many of them wore, and it had gold flecks, like gold little specks Ooh. in the paint. I remember it vividly. Chris got a 1995 Saturn for a thousand bucks. Paula, a Ford Mustang, 2,500. Paula from Eau Claire. I want to see where else we go. Oh, Dave is in Virginia. So you see, we are all over yeah, the place. Yeah, we are all over. Dave is in Virginia at 77 AMC Concord Ford Door. Concord or Concord? I don't know. Concord? I won't lie, I don't know that. Why is it a Concord and not a Concord? <laughs> Why? Oh, here's one. Who told me today that they had a Buick Opal? Was that Barry? Oh, that was our pal Barry Cohen. Barry, uh, Kay Laverne in Bloomer also had what his dad called his mighty putt-putt. It was a 69 Opal Cadet. So you weren't the only one that had a, an Opal. Now, an Opal, if you remember, was a Buick. It was an old See, Buick type of car. One. You don't remember I don't the know. Opal? No. I remember my mom had a Corvair. Anybody remember the Corvair? Oh, yeah. The Chevy Corvair? Wow, yeah. apparently they like that one. That car is worth bucks now, man, yeah. I remember my dad had a 73 Barracuda. Ooh. And I knew... At that point, my mom and dad were just about ready to slice each other's throats anyway, and I knew that. I think that was the, the last straw, because my dad came tooling down the street in the Barracuda. All cool. Back then, it was 73. My dad was wearing, I got to get into this very quickly. My dad is wearing, I remember it so well, this is the most effed up thing, a felt shirt. Of, yeah, I think it was felt. Oh, God. With like orange felt here, brown felt here. And he had felt shoes on oh, with gross. heels on. Yo, Ew. And his, his yellow tinted glasses. Yes. And, Those and are my sweet. dad was an insurance salesman for Metropolitan <laughs> Life Insurance. And he came down the street and he pulled in front of my house. And I'll never forget my mom, Bobby. We talk about you all the time. I love you, Bobby. My mom, Bobby, was like, oh, Jesus Christ, what has your father gotten into now? Ah. <laughs> so, yeah, oh my God. Good old, good old time. But a beautiful car, you know. Uh, it it's funny beautiful. how many cars we've had that would be worth a lot of money. What car is around that you always wanted? That you never got to my, have. My uh, 69 Nova SS. That's what I always wanted. I wanted. Yeah. Straight up. I like muscle cars. I like that muscly, that, yes, late 60s. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Early I, there 70s. Was a, uh, there was a Conquest, the Chrysler Conquest. It was a sports car. 
and they made one special color blue that the Conquest had. This is probably okay. early 90s. Uh, I wanted the Conquest so bad, never had it. But now all I want is my Jeep. I love my Jeep. Your Jeep's awesome, though. I love my Jeep. And, but to get a Jeep, if there are any Jeep dealers out there watching, a uh, sweet a deal love. because I will plug the living hell out of you. <laughs> Both, I, I'll plug you. I'll plug you on the air. Holly will plug you off the air. Oh my uh, God! Don't listen to him. If I get the Jeep and then he can plug Come you, on. not me. I'll yeah. get the Jeep. The Jeep dealer will get the ride. Everything's good. But it, it all evens out. So, uh, so there nice. you go. Uh, just so Auburn, New York, Caprice Classic Station Wagon. Uh, with all, Altoona, Wisconsin, Syracuse, New York, all over the place. So, uh, Canterbury, New Hampshire. Thank you guys for answering our Facebook feedback. Yeah. Yes, everywhere. We love it. All over. No. Get this. Joining us, he is basically I, I, he, he is the man that is the Northwoods Rock Rally. The Give man. it up for our yeah. pal, John Kaiser. Yeah. Oh, so you, yeah. Welcome back to the show, man. Thanks for having me, I, I'm so glad to have you back here now. Uh, the show's getting closer and closer. You just announced your full lineup of Northwoods Rock Rally. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty tough year. So I want to go day by day because this is gonna be, we got some time now, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to go day by day. So you've got, it's, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday. Okay, Thursday, which is which day? August 16th. 15th. 15th. I got this all effed up. <laughs> okay, either which way, and I'm hosting the damn thing. That's awful. I mean, hey, where am I doing? I'll keep him on uh, track. With our pal Scary Terry Steven. I can't wait to see you, brother. And Holly's going to be yeah. there. Yeah. Give it up for Scary Terry. Yeah. Yeah. So excited. Uh, no, give it up for Scary Terry yeah. Steven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so Thursday, who you got? Well, you know, headline on Thursday, we talked about them last time. Nonpoint is going to be back. Okay. Yeah. That's a Super excited about them. You know, joining them that night is uh, Head PE, their first show. I can't wait. That's in really Wisconsin good. in a long time. Uh, I just, my wife and I saw them, uh, saw Head PE in Boise, Idaho, a couple months ago, and it was in this really cool venue. Honestly, like the size of uh, the plus, the room here at the plus, which it was so cool because. Like you could stand to the side of the band. Like the stage was just this little stage, and you could stand to the side of the band. And that's like where all the moshing people were. So there, people were getting pushed all over the place. And like you walk up to the bar, and then somebody gets pushed into your back. And well, that was a fun time, you know. Boise is actually, for those that don't know, people think just like to think about around here. What the hell could be around here? What could be in Boise, Idaho? Beautiful part beautiful. of the country. Oh, great. Seriously, a beautiful I'm thinking part of the country. I'm thinking about moving out, out there. You, you want to come out to Boise with me? I'll go Holly? out to Boise. Yeah. I'll go. Yeah, it's well, beautiful. Well, who are you offering it to? Me or her? <laughs> Both. Oh, okay. Let's all go. Let's we bring, get, let's, let's let's bring the whole PFT show out there. <laughs> yes. so, so continue with Thursday now. Uh, so we also have that night, Smile Empty Souls coming oh, back. Oh, my God. I can't wait for you that. Know, those, That's going to be big. Those guys, are. they put on some of the best shows um, another another band from Thursday night that I'm really excited about is a band called Simon Says. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, which is this is their first kind of return to the scene in over 20 years. Oh wow! They came out uh, in 1999, so this is the 25th anniversary of their of their debut album uh, from Universal Records. Wow. Um, they only played. They only had like a four or five year span before they disbanded. Yeah. And now they're coming back here in 2024, which is really awesome. Um, so that's the, that's the, that's the Thursday show. <laughs> so then, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at him. <laughs> Mike, I'm looking at him. Oh, when I, okay, I see what you're saying. He's so demanding. Okay, that's fine. Just kidding. Thank God for those ends. That's fine. <laughs> I, I yeah! Can, yeah! yeah! I, I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I don't even mind if you leave this part in, Mike. Do we get <laughs> bloopers? Do we get bloopers? I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> Mike is confusing the crap out of me. He's, what are you doing? Okay, so now we know. Now I know I can look at that camera when I'm not looking at you. But I like looking at you, so there you go. It's kind of dreamy. I'm a, I'm a pretty guy. I, what can I say? So it's Simon Says, like S E Z. My wife right? hit the lottery. <laughs> oh my God. Give it up for the yeah, wife. Yeah, the the get it, girl. God bless you. Um, so. Who are you most looking forward to on Friday, yourself? I mean, on Thursday. Uh, on Thursday? Well, uh, actually, 
I love all of those bands. Oh, hang on one second. <laughs> oh, thanks, Mike. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I love all of those bands. Uh, the, the band I'm looking forward to most on Thursday is actually a band that's played every year of my, my version of Rock Rally so far, but this year they're going to come and play their first ever all original set. Uh, so this is a band from Ironwood, Michigan. Oh, I know the area well. They're called... <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing the band on, on my head right now, actually. The oh, band, Nolium. The band Nolium oh. is going to play their first ever all-original <laughs> set at, on Thursday at Rock Rally. And, uh, and they're, they're awesome. They're, you know, they kind of, they're like a mix of, of the new metal sound with like Nirvana or like grunge. Ooh. You, you mix the grunge yeah. and new metal sound, and, and that's right where they're at. Have them, have them stop at Rise, the dispensary. I, Pick you up some goods. Me and he Mike. Me and Mike last week when we were proving to people that we really weren't lovers, we we took a picture. <laughs> They're lovers. We took a picture. Oh, excuse me. Me and Mike well, last week when we were proving we weren't lovers, we took a picture of the Ironwood sign. That's They're lovers. That, that's hilarious. I didn't realize that bands are from Ironwood. Well. They're they're probably the biggest band up there. There's a few other bands from that from that area that are pretty good. Uh, As Bullets, Baptized, Spun, um, uh, Ghidorah, which is yep. a res metal band. Yep, yep, if you've yep. if you've heard of Ghidorah, those guys are yep, and yep, and yep. Lady. Uh, they're they're an absolutely awesome, very heavy, uh, but they're My they're favorite. res metal because they're up on the reservation outside of Escanaba there. Isn't that something, oh, huh? Yeah, yep. so they're natives. Sweet. They're natives. We I'm had excited them. for we had them I've never seen them. I've never heard of them. Yeah, they're very they're, they're cool. Uh, one of the things, now listen to this. We talked about the pasta thing. Yeah. Remember? Okay. Yeah. We researched the Guinness Book of World Records. The Guinness Book of Records has changed since a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have to pay them now to get into the book. Yep. It's big, oh. Mike, Mike looked into it, you have to pay them like a lot of money to be featured like, to be featured as a full-fledged record thing. But we know the Guinness Book of Records, the record is 435 couples eating a piece of pasta between them, okay? Like, like Lady and the Tramp. We are still gonna do that, yeah. and we're still gonna be the unofficial world record. Yeah. So we want 500 couples to do we the can pasta do that. thing. Oh yeah. So we want to do that one of the nights of the concert. We'll get it, it will take you know half hour, but yeah, but it's gonna I, be worth it. Well, I I think uh, you know there's a there's a couple different ways that we can do that, but you know we don't have of course, and maybe scary Terry too, and maybe we'll grab a couple of guys from the bands too. We'll jump on like a, a golf cart or something. And just start gla blasting some music and have a microphone and say, "All right, everybody, you know we got 20 minutes. We got to round everybody up. Um, you know the one thing I'm wondering about is how do we do this fundamentally? Like let's let's think about this for a second. Just leave it. Let's, <laughs> let's think about this for a second. Okay. Uh, do you set up a table, a long, long table? Do you just have everybody just oh, no, walk up there? to a thing and get yeah, it? And I figured, yeah. Everybody's I, just going to stand there with a, you know, how does, because we got a. Assembly line. Yeah, I, yeah. I figured we would just have. Well, okay, okay. All, right, all right, all right. You know how long it takes. All right, we've all been to, to, to you know, I, I don't know, I'm Polish, I don't know. I, we've been to <laughs> weddings that are big weddings, right? Yeah. Think about 500 people. All right, 500 or 1,000 people actually, yeah. 500 couples going through an assembly line. The first people through, they're, it's going to be ice cold by the time. Oh, it's going to be cold when they get it. Yeah, it'll be yeah. cold when they get they're it. They're going to be so I'm drunk. I'm thinking it'll care. just be in the middle One of the field. 500, yeah. 500 strands. 500 strands. 500 couples. 500 well, noodles. You got to 500 up. couples. I, I'm, I'm thinking everybody needs a plate of spaghetti. A plate? A whole plate. Yeah, why not? Are you buying you, the hey, This is Scorch's PFG TV. We don't have money for a plate of spaghetti for everybody. <laughs> See, but I think I think we could get... All right, come on. How much does spaghetti cost, for real? Four home it's bases. Cooking. Everybody collects at that base. And then they just I like that. Time. I like that. Everybody, everybody brings their own pasta. Bring your own oh, pasta. Oh, now that's oh. interesting. Oh, we do something? Or we could, have a couple of, we could have a couple of different suppliers. Oh, we could do that too. We could have we could have competing pasta suppliers. Oh, we gotta talk. Uh, okay. Oh, but, well, your let's, gangster let's, mob. Let's talk. Let's talk now about Friday. Uh, okay. On Rock Rally. What do you got Friday? Well, well, Friday. Obviously, you know, we talked about this last time I was in here. We had the legendary German German metal band Accept yeah. on Friday. Unfortunately, uh, you know, they're coming from Germany. <laughs> 
So uh, we got we got a call here a few weeks ago before we came out with the lineup um, yeah. Yeah. that they were going to have to cancel their performance at Rock Rally, mm. which super disappointing. Right. You know, I uh, was really excited to see them, but I wanted to at least be able to put up something that people that listen to that era Comparable. of music yep. Yep. are going to be happy with. And one of the bands actually played Rock Rally before, uh, Bullet Boys. Great. In you. <laughs> wow, yeah. do it again. No, <laughs> uh, so they're they're gonna be back. They played in 2018. I got a funny story about them. Um, I don't trust him anymore. I don't trust hey, him. Like, <laughs> last time he was on this show, I had a bag of, of uh, pre rolls from a common collected cannabis company. Yeah. Actually, get up yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was before the 420 show. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> John's like, John's like, hey, you so, might have got wet. Psh- <laughs> knocked it, knocked it. Oh, so I'm sorry, I knocked over your glass of water. We both looked down at the same time. And said, that's your box of blunt, so. But, but they didn't get affected, so that's why I even gave it one today. So, yeah. uh, so that's why I moved it. Anyhow, so Bullet Boys, you got. Who else? Yeah, Bullet Boys, uh, the, the headliner for Friday is going to be Fast for Pussycat. I can't yeah. wait for that. Yeah. This is a band we're really excited about. We have, uh, we have some connections with that band. Um, Mother Wind's manager, Vicki Hamilton, who actually broke Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue back in the 80s wow. in L.A. Uh, she's, she's now managing the band Mother Wind, who's been here, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, awesome. She has a connection. She used to manage Faster Pussycat in the 90s, oh. still friends with them. And uh, right away, once, once Accept uh, backed out, I, I let her know, and she's like, oh, let me, let me see if we can get them. And it was like that. She, if she you look it up it in the more. music history books, Guns N' Roses and Motley Crue in the 90s also broke Holly. I was uh, in elementary school, by the way. <laughs> Look at what bands we're talking about here, you know, so. Uh, oh, you're not wrong. <laughs> so, well, it's real, when I saw Fast the Pussycat, I got all big jolly, because I'm like, that's just, that's a very cool lineup. And the people that are gonna be there are gonna love it, you know? Yeah. Uh, we'll, go, we'll get into Saturday in a second, but I want to explain that Rock Rally, it is the most chill vibe mm-hmm. of virtually any concert I have ever been to. Have you you've been to one? Yes, yeah. It's, yeah. it's totally different than it's, any other festival I've been to. There is no pressure. And it's no offense to anybody. I understand there are bigger concerts. I'm not even talking about the one in town. There are bigger concerts. And there has to be a certain amount but of, of different types of pressure put on people. But a lot of times, there is too much BS pressure mm-hmm. put on people that are just trying to enjoy being at a show. Yeah. You guys, you, you made sure people were safe. You made sure nobody's doing anything really effed up that's gonna hurt them or somebody else. But other than that, you guys are like, go ahead, party, enjoy yourselves. It's yep. a show, it's, it's a weekend, fun. you guys are camping here. Uh, it, it's actually really funny how much one rule can cover. Yeah. You know, don't be a dumbass. Yeah. Yep. I, that really, it's all encompassing. <laughs> yeah. You know. Don't be a dumbass. And, and, you know, I, I, I have to, I have to give it up to the original Northwoods Rock Rally crew. You know, uh, Phil Schmidt, John Edmean. You know, that that whole crew that founded it, uh, because that slogan, "Don't be a dumbass," it, it covers absolutely everything. Because we've had situations where we'll have security go and talk to somebody. And they don't even have to say anything. You know, somebody's being a dumbass, yeah. and security just has to look at them, and they know they fucked up. Yep, yep. And uh, that's the beautiful thing about Riley. Um, you know, the this the newer rendition of rendition of of Riley, we we don't have quite as much of a of a police presence that the previous rendition had, <laughs> and yet. Despite that, we've had no arrests, we've had no calls. It's, it's we've not had despite no... that, it's because of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it, it's what it is, is it's, it's, it's like family. You, you go in there, it's like, it's like family, people are looking after each yeah. other. You know, sometimes you have, you know, there's alcohol involved. So naturally, sometimes you get husband and wife situations or, you know. <laughs> but, but somehow, even when that type of stuff happens, their friend group are able to separate them and things like it. It's it's crazy. Some of the stories you hear about, some of the fights that happen that you don't hear about till the next day, um, 
those all get de-escalated by just the family that's out there, which is which doesn't happen elsewhere. I want to go on the record. I want to look at the right camera and go on the record for this one. Now, this year at Rock Rally, can Scorch's PFG TV, because Mike and I are both old men, can we get a golf cart? I don't have I don't have my own golf carts. Oh, here we go. Oh, fired. Wow. Yeah. But, uh, um, excuse me, did so anybody in the anyone. viewing audience hear me ask him, do you have your own, I didn't ask him that. I just say, can we have a golf cart? You will go out and get us one. <laughs> so, so here's a, no, here's a, here's actually a good conversation. It's a good segue. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because I think, uh, I think there's a lot of ways that, that Northwoods Rock Rally, PFG, are also our friends at Monster Hall. Yep. And, uh, and some of our, our local, um, you know, uh, PFG's pub crawl uh, yeah, participants, mm -hmm. you know, we can all work together with some of the local businesses, yep. right? So, so one of them is like Briggs Tent, who does my, my big tent, okay? You know, they also do <laughs> golf carts, right? Oh. For instance, and I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have Briggs around, you know, they're great people. They, they set up the tent, it takes like 30 minutes for, uh, for our, big, our big tent. And they're great people, and we've always talked about doing some golf carts with them, but it always, the dollars just, it always gets too tight at that point. Yep, yep. So why isn't there a situation where we can, we can team all, together. we can all team sure. together. Yep, we can yep. all team together and say, hey, you know, we can, we can do some kind of advertising with, with this, PFG, yep, yep. with Northwoods Rock Rally, and we can get a golf cart, and, you know, we can make all that kind of work together. Yep, yep, yep. Um, that's something that's the same type of thing that works with like uh, there's there's all these different party buses that go around and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yep. Why can't we why can't we do you know these these pub crawls? Let's live stream a pub crawl. You know with you know I, I don't want to name a, a a company but a uh, but a but an actual party bus. Poor Mike Snow is like what the hell live stream live stream a pub <laughs> crawl? More work for me, JC. <laughs> Uh, it, it's actually a really good idea. You know, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking. Uh, that's, a, that's a really fun let's, idea. Let's keep, let's keep getting out in the community because yeah. I, I think that's, that's just a great way. Yeah. To, yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a, that's a great way to, to, to increase the, part, the, the participation yep. Yep. Of, across different. You know, sometimes everybody looks at things as competitive. I don't necessarily look at anything competitive like that. I think a rising tide lifts all boats, and if we're if we're out there, you know, if we're helping, say, on the rocks, for instance, if we're over there doing something, and we're also hyping up our friends, you know, up the street at at Brick House or yep, something yep, like that, yep. um, no one's getting hurt by that. Yep, yep. It's it's a it's a it's a positive type of we're thing. A family, you know, so, BFG family. So that so that that golf cart. That that golf cart concept. This is all just coming off the cuff. This that golf cart concept could turn into to something, nice. you know, really We're nice that we, can include, now. That, that we can <laughs> that we can include a lot of different businesses mm -hmm. in. Absolutely. You know? no, and I and I totally don't utilize, like for Rock Rally, I don't utilize sponsorship opportunities yeah. really that well at all. Yeah. You know. We're gonna talk about that after yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. You and I gotta talk before next year's Rock. Uh oh, Rally. we gotta. Trust me, we're gonna have a powwow. Um, <laughs> Now let's talk Saturday, and then I want to talk camping. Yes. Saturday, what's up on Saturday? Okay, so Saturday, super excited. You know, this is um, active rock radio is what what we all what we all talk about nowadays. The bands that are are in the in the now. Okay, so so our our headliner is Shaman's Harvest. Yes, which is just an awesome southern rock band. You know, they played uh, they played rally I think 2016, and they've just come out with some. Even more great music since then. Awesome band. Mike was Mike saw them. Was actually very shocked when he saw them. He told me that he said he was shocked by their set. So yep, good. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen. Very, well, they played at my old work. So yep, yeah, seen a few very times. Very cool sound. And then uh, Devour the Day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, another one. Awesome yeah. Devour the Day played in 2012 at Rally. Something really cool about Devour the Day. The bass player Joey and the uh, the drummer. I'm pretty sure his name is Matt. Mm -hmm. Are both in Devour the Day. From and they're both in uh, Pop Evil. I mean, okay, yeah. they're both yep. in Pop Evil. Mm -hmm. uh, Pop Evil is going to be in Iowa on Wednesday before Rock Rally, so it worked out just perfectly that those guys are going to play their show with Pop Evil on Wednesday. And they come to Rock Cruise up to Rock Rally yep. on Saturday. Perfect. And uh, and it, it you know we had a band that we were two days away from announcing 
to be our Saturday headliner, and they and they backed out before we were able to announce it. And it was terrible. You know, we're two months behind. We're supposed to usually announce the the full lineup by St. Patrick's Day. Well, now it's May, and uh, and that's when that happened. Was was in was in March, and it took us this long to get the rest of it together. Wow. For the stars to align the way they did with with like Faster Pussycat and, and with Devour the Day and you know another band on Saturday that I'm really excited about coming all the way from New Zealand. Wow. One of the only rock bands you'll see play the Didge, the Didgeroo, Didge Like Ridge. a Storm. Oh, oh yes. Like a Storm will oh, be yes. coming. Their first US shows in over five years. So it's crazy. You know, it's it's it was it was really it was so difficult this year. But the way that it ended up uh, you know, having kind of a new metal day Thursday, a, a classic rock day Friday, and an active rock day Saturday. I think it's going to be the biggest one yet. I think it's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be. Sounds pretty cool. darn epic. Yeah. 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 I have to change the subject quickly. Give it up for our pal Riley, who just went out there and told those people to shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riley. I saw that, man. Good for you. Very Riley's good. Riley's a damn legend, oh, too, oh, just, by the way. No, no. Ask him. He'll tell you. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. No, you do no, have to ask he's, him. He's great. That's why he's here, man. Because we only work with the best here. You're right. <laughs> oh, you said that very well. Like you believe he it. He knows it. That's why. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk. Did I sound sarcastic? No, no, no. <laughs> I meant to like. Let's talk camping now. So, there, is there camping available still? Not a lot. Yep. Not a lot. Actually, awesome. uh, we might have 30 or 40 campsites left. We we might end up going to. We have an overflow area if we okay. sell out, but. Um, but yeah, there are still campsites available, and it is the best camping experience you it could is. ever imagine. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to buy a wristband to get into the campground, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, or anything like that. You, you know, you jab, 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 jab. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> jab, 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 jab. <laughs> but uh, but no. And while you're there, go stop at Wicked Sweet Bake Shop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we have we have some really cool places out in the in the campground at Rock Rally. We have the party bus which is run um, you know, run by some folks here from the Chippewa Valley that you know, they usually have some beer bongs set up, they have Heck Jaeger, yeah, Jaeger have that. for days. Don't they run the wet t shirt contest? They run the wet t shirt contest, which oh, is Lord. Nice. One of the big attractions. Oh yeah, one of the big attractions. I don't know, I saw I saw two of the big attractions last year. <laughs> Not one, but two. Yeah, uh, you know we we also have uh, Bent Nail Saloon, which is usually at yep. at Fast Up the Road too. They they usually come to rally as well. So oh, last thanks. year, I wish I remember her name. The younger, the, the daughter of the Bent Nail people. Do you know what I'm talking about? The daughter. Mm. She gave me a Bent Nail because they wear them. They have oh, these yeah. necklaces. Oh yeah, that's right. And it, I lost it like two days ago. Oh no. I have the holder, but I lost the Bent Nail. So I will be looking for I will be looking for another bent he needs nail a new one. Uh, this year at Rock That's Rally. sad. Yeah, that is sad. Uh, so what were you doing that you lost it? It, it always I, it fell out of the holder many times. Oh. I just I just didn't this hear time find yeah, it. Oh, it I, I do. I love Rock Rally. It's it's something. Last year, like I said, it was my first one. I love truly everything about it. That's not blowing smoke up your ass. It's just for somebody like me. To be able to be comfortable, and just to be able to like, just to relax, and enjoy a show, without having people breathing down my ass all the time, and like you said, I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll bring up the wristband thing. You know what? No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with that if that's how it has to be. But you know what? That should be the last, the last, the last effort, the last whatever I'm thinking of. You know, the last ditch effort. Uh, you don't need to be like the Gestapo mm -hmm. at a show. Yep. If nobody's hurting somebody, okay, believe me, security's necessary. If nobody's hurting somebody. And we don't have much of that. No, you don't, believe me. <laughs> but if no. nobody's being hurt, just let people go, okay. man. You know, that, that's it. Yeah. And I think that's what people love about mm -hmm. Rock Rally. Yeah. So I yeah, love we it. Don't do, we don't even do VIP or anything like that. You know, you're, if you're in, you're in. The bands come and hang out no matter who it yep. is. You know, what about food trucks and stuff like that? Oh yeah, yeah. We, uh, you know, we have a, a, a couple of really awesome food trucks that come back every year. One of them, one of them is a Italian food truck. One of them is uh, they do like prime beef. They have a prime rib sandwich. It's yeah. a legitimate slab of prime rib. 
Very good. He likes that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's I get excited. that. I get that Jump. multiple times a day during, <laughs> during Rock Valley. Uh, there's another one that's a, that's a barbecue, and they do like uh, pulled pork, mac and cheese. Uh, they do like a waffle cone, actually. Yes, pulled pork, I had that cheese, last time I was there. Um, mm. And then we, obviously we have our we have our coffee our coffee place too, which is which is great. So uh, yeah, I remember because they did serve tea earlier. Ooh, ha, ha. Peggy. Peggy at Bruja, that's yeah. it. Uh, it's John Kaiser from Rock Rally. Uh, give it up for John. And give yeah! It up for John. Hold up for a second. Uh, you know, we want to thank, am I back to my camera, Mike? Thank you. We want to thank our pals at JNE Meat. I saw something they had today, and I want to make sure I get it right. Jalapeno, jalapeno popper bratwurst. Ooh. Yeah. So right? Spicy. You tell me that doesn't sound good. Sounds jalapeno great. popper bratwurst. What I'm going to tell you again is you go to JNE Meats in Lake Halley. You tell them Scorch's PFG TV sent you. You get a bunch of wieners and burgers and meat and things mm -hmm. like that. Then you go to Wicked Sweet Bake Shop in Kadad. You order your breads and rolls. Put the meat on the fresh, put the fresh meat on the fresh bread. As my mother would say, oh, it's so freaking good already. <laughs> so, uh, uh, JNE Meats, thank you guys for being part yeah. of the show. We love you. <laughs> Common Collected, the cannabis company as well. Common Collected, you go there, you get yourself a couple of things to puff on. Of course, it's all 100% legal. They wouldn't mm -hmm. be doing it. Maybe it might help you with your appetite. You know what? If you're having trouble sleeping, it doesn't work for me because I'm a freak of nature. But yes. they have CBD that'll help you sleep. Uh, if you're having trouble with aches and pains, they'll help you with that. Uh, if you're looking for papers, wraps, pipes, anything like that, they've got it all. They it's a, it it's a common collected cannabis company in Chippewa Falls. Uh, Shilka Flooring. Now, let's go back to the bratwurst and the, and the roll. You're at home. You're having, you're, not, you're having a barbecue with your family and friends with J&A Meats and, and, the wicked, and the Wicked Sweet Rolls. And you, all of a sudden, mustard and ketchup or whatever else you put on a bratwurst. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> just squirts all over the floor, yep. okay, and, and somebody steps in it. Maybe nobody notices it till the end of the night. People have been stepping in it all night. Ruins your floor. Oh, God, what are you going to do? You're going to call Dion at Shilka Flooring, and they're going to come, and they're going to take care of your floor. You're going to tell them Scorch's PFG TV told you to call, and all of a sudden, they're, it's, it's Shilka Flooring. Yeah. They're there to help you out. So. Thanks, Dion. All right. All right. Yeah. Now, here comes a little moisture, Holly. It's a Chickadee's Family Restaurant. My favorite. Ooh. Give it up for our pals at Chickadee's. <laughs> eggs Benedict. You know, I'll go back. Forget the Eggs Benedict for right now. I'm going to go back to burgers. We found out one of the couple of, uh, maybe a week ago, myself and Mike went in there. We found out that they have burgers, and mm -hmm. they're known for their burgers at Chickadee's. Mm -hmm. Go grab yourself some lunch. Forget about the fast food joints. Remember, the theory of this show we truly believe it. Even though there's going to be a lot of stuff national, we're lucky enough to be local, supporting local. So that's what we're telling you. Forget the big, the, the national fast food chain. Yeah. Go grab your burger at Chickadee's. Yep. Tell them Scorch's PFG TV sent you. And maybe they'll make it with fresh meat that time. So there you go. Chickadee's. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Chickadee's. Always fresh meat. They know I'm joking. They're going to be here next week. They can pick on me. Uh, let's do another pub crawl. We're going to see some of the pub crawl family members. We're coming back with this guy here, Frankie Spice Morelli, a guy that used to be in the mob, now has a cookbook out. We're mm -hmm. going to talk to him next on Scorch's PMG right. TV.
Frankie Morelli, thank you so much for joining me. We appreciate it. And join the Scorches PFG TV. Much appreciated. Well, thank you very much for having me. I love Frankie Spice Morelli, the mob cookbook and diet. Savor and slim the Italian way. Which, you know what? If you're going to savor and slim, there ain't nothing better than the Italian way, brother. That's for certain. <laughs> and it's amazing. Um, it's amazing that people love Italian food. It's not amazing that they love it. It's amazing how much people love their Italian foods. No, exactly. Italian food got rated number one of all cuisines in the world. Imagine that. You know. Now let's get into the let's get into the book for a second. Mob cookbook. Now, as a former a former mafioso dude, people may be thinking mob as in mob M O B, but this is actually M O B B. Can you explain that? Yeah, the acronym for mob is Mercy and Optimism Beyond Borders. Everybody deserves a second chance in life including those such as myself who've fallen in life. And in my belief, the only person that was perfect got crucified. Everybody else has some kind of a, a fault or a vice, such as gambling, drinking, drugs, alcohol, or whatever it may be. <laughs> and uh, this book is based on the premise of helping people, like through diet, exercise, and most of all, positive thinking, people can change their life to the good. And I had to put up with that in prison. And I helped a lot of people as a suicide companion change their lives. For example, when I finally got sentenced, three of the families that I helped save their lives went uh, and testified on my behalf at sentencing. So I did make a difference in people's lives. And, and, and that's very important. But even though the book talks about changing your life, it's very funny, has entertaining stories about real mafia guys that I actually know, such as Nicky Scarpa Jr., who took eight bullets to the chest and lived. His daddy was little Nicky Scarpa, who was head of the mafia in Philly and Atlantic City. Then I have guys like Frankie the Ice Pick, Tommy Guns, Irish Joe, Eddie the Racer, Jeremy the Beast, uh, uh, Jimmy the Jet, uh, don't, don't, Irie the Gangster. Don't forget about Lou the Hebrew Hammer. <laughs> yeah, Lou. Yeah, he, he's a, actually from up north in Toronto. And <laughs> and I do have some great recipes in the book, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, brisket and uh, uh, stuff like that in the book. From, from there was a lot of great Jewish mobsters like Meyer Lansky, Bugsy Siegel. See, you know, my people represented too, man. You know, I want to go back to something you mentioned a while ago about all the different vices that people have, because I was wondering if you could help somebody like me who has all of those vices wrapped up in one. Yes, we all have vices. <laughs> and people that say they don't, they're lying. Exactly. Now, tell us, you take old family Italian recipes and other recipes that you've had, and you turn them healthy, which is amazing, an amazing thing. So kudos to you. In the book, you give recipes about making your favorite pasta sauces. And amongst everything else, you have a section on vegetables, which I love because I'm a vegetarian. Yes. And we had Dr. Sandra Frank, who is also Jewish. She <laughs> vetted the recipe. And she's considered, she's on the cover with me. It's by Frankie Spice with Dr. Sandra Frank. And give her kudos because she's considered one of the top uh, nutritionists slash dietitians in, in the country. And she said she couldn't put the book down. And she basically took the recipes and vetted them, you know. And she took several of the recipes um, out of the uh, my book and incorporated them into my three diets, which are the Vini Vidi Vici, which means I came, I saw, I conquered. And then she's breaking down, broken down all the nutritional information, and she's quite a story in herself. She went uh, to university uh, in one area, and she got uh, uh, put in a diet study, and she lost 103 pounds and kept it off. 
So then she became a, a, a highly respected nutritionist, and she uh, said she couldn't put the book down. Now, as someone who's probably eaten quite a deal of pasta, you've got to admit, uh, you have a section in the book on making fresh pasta. I mean, the box stuff is good if you need to have it in a pinch, but there is nothing like the taste of fresh pasta. Exactly. And my grandma taught me how to make fresh pasta when I was four years old. Oh. And my mo mother was a great cook, too. So uh, I was born around great cooks. I was very fortunate. Is it difficult to make fresh pasta? It's simple. Very simple. It's pretty much just eggs, flour, a little bit of salt. And you knead the dough lightly. Then you cover it for about 30 minutes. Then you roll it out and you cut it. Real simple. What? The gnocchi recipe in my book, which is one of my favorites, oh my god, yes, is very easy to make. And uh, and the San Marzano tomato sauce is so simple, people can't believe it because one of my friends, Anthony the Axe, who's a world class chef, okay, and I'm glad, and he's like Sonny from The Godfather on steroids. <laughs> I told him, Tony, I said your sauce is horrible. I said. Your meatballs are horrible, and and you don't know how to make gnocchi. I thought he was going to whack me. And then I said, <laughs> the problem is you put all these spices in your sauce, like too much oregano, too much sugar, onions and carrots and a zillion spices. And the reason is you're using bad tomatoes. Yeah. Well, San Marzano tomato is consistent. So with my sauce, all you need is San Marzano tomatoes, salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of olive oil, and if you want to deglaze it with wine, and you cook it uh, or simmer it for four hours, and it makes it 10 times better sauce. <clears throat> now, at his award-winning restaurant today, he serves the sauce I taught him, the uh, meatballs I taught him, and uh, the gnocchi. And he's a million times better cook than I'll ever be, but because I know how to eat and I've been around, I taught him. Uh, Frankie Spice Morelli. Uh, the book is called Mob Cookbook and Diet, Savor and Slim, the Italian Way. Now tell us some of your favorite dishes that you have in the book. Well, again, one of my favorite dishes that I just had is simple. Okay. Spaghetti with the Primo San Marzano tomato sauce with meatballs magnifico. And I just love it because it's so simple. And, you know, I, I've eaten all over the world. And, and one time I flight over a million miles on United. But some of the best food I've ever eaten is simple. And I like simplicity. Now, the gnocchi are outstanding. And then if you want to do stuff like veal parmesan and all the soups and the salads in the book are really good. They're, they're outstanding and they're easy to make. And, and so the, those are some of my favorite recipes. Another one that my mom taught me is the beef abruzzi, which you can get even uh, rough beef, not even the best beef, and you marinate it in garlic and, and San Marzano tomato sauce and cook it for hours, and it comes out tender, very tender, and it's as good as any barbecue like you'll ever get anywhere. Now, are you a fan of like, are you a fan of like tripe and stuff like that, which is, to me, I've always found that just kind of the... I'm not a fan of tripe. My wife used to like menudo, which is a Mexican dish. Really? And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pasoli with menudo. I wouldn't eat it for, for the world. Yeah. It grossed me out, to be honest with you. Yeah, I would imagine. So for those who don't know, it looks like a, a mesh kind of whitish, off-white color that it just it just looks disgusting so i can't even imagine now you do desserts as well and considering it's a pretty healthy book what kind of desserts do you have in the book well we have everything uh from um, uh lemon cake uh to a gelato and the reason we have desserts in because if you're going to be successful on a diet you have to have a cheat day okay it's true so nobody can go through a diet without cheating because if they do then they just get, uh, lose interest. So we basically have sinful desserts that you can eat during your cheat day. And, uh, you know, when you first start, you might not be eating uh, desserts on the Vinny phase, 
But when you get to the, the Vichy fish, you can eat desserts like once a week or sneak them in and just keep the calories down because you have to uh, sin once in a while. It is uh, Frankie Spice Morelli. The book is called Mob Cookbook and Diet, uh, Savor and Slim, The Italian Way. Now, why do you suppose, Frankie, that people really love Italian food so much? I mean, you mentioned Mexican. People love Mexican. People love their Asian foods. But there is just something about Italian food. You go into a restaurant that serves Italian food and it's cooked the right way, you're going to drool from the second you get in to the second your meal is done. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I just think because of the Italian culture. You know, I've been all over Europe, and I'm not saying because uh, I'm Italian. And, you know, Italians and Jews get along very good, okay? And Jewish people are the same way. One of my best friends... Uh, is Izzy Goldreich, and he uh, he's originally from New York, and he lives in West Palm, and we talk several times a day. And basically, uh, it's all about family, okay? Like when I went to Europe, I went to all the countries, and I'm not saying because I'm Italian, but the Italian people seem to love life more than any other people. Yeah, it's true. And that just translates to food. Even Bobby Flay, who everybody says is the world's best chef, where does he go to? Where does he enjoy? Not Ireland. He likes to go to Tuscany. It's sometimes with Giada, of course. But who well, that's besides the point. <laughs> now, I've, you said something that I'm finding very difficult to believe. A Jewish guy named Izzy from New York now lives in West Palm Beach, Florida. Come on, that can't really happen. <laughs> well, his mother moved down there on top of everything else. And I was just with him a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> And he's a great guy. We're best friends. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, now, where can you get this book? You can get it on Amazon, or you can go to our website, which is ourmob.com, mob with two Bs. And let me ask you, if you, if you don't mind, uh, and I don't want to get too deep into it, having nothing to do with the book, tell us about some of your experiences with the mob and with, with the, what, what, you, what you were in jail for, if you can. Okay, well, like I said, one of the guys uh, that was a hitman for the mafia, who was Frankie Narducci, <laughs> I took care of him, and he came in with alcohol poisoning so bad, he couldn't even get out of the wheelchair, okay? And uh, and then, you know, Nicky Scarfo was quite an inter interesting character, and probably the most interesting of all was Tommy Guns who had an Irish name. He's in my book. Uh, he changed his name. I mean, from an Italian to an Irish name. He had a contract on him for over $100,000 because he pissed off the pagan motorcycle gang in a drug deal, okay? And he was a real character. Uh, his brother, uh, Louis the Hammer, was whacked in, in a mob war in Philadelphia. So he decided to leave the mob, but his roots still stayed with the mob. So he became the biggest marijuana dealer in Philadelphia, and he never got caught. Then he got involved later on in life uh, with some doctors and started to do prescriptions uh, uh, and uh, writing false prescriptions. Mm. And then that, they got involved with the mag, uh, with the pagan motorcycle gang. One of his friends was whacked by the pagans. The doctor who was writing the prescriptions had his wife whacked, and uh, basically he testified against the doctor, not because he was a rat, but because they they put a contract on his family. And once they crossed the line, uh, you know, with putting a contract on his family, he had to do what was best for the family. Wow, no question. Such interesting. I mean, face facts, people, people don't want to admit it maybe but that kind of stuff is interesting it's interesting to hear it's interesting for somebody to tell those stories man it's more interesting to actually have lived through them so so good for you frankie one last question if we can okay and this has really nothing to do with the book but i like to ask my guests certain questions that are a little off the beaten path so let's just say you can only eat one dish not one type of food, but you can only have one dish for the rest of your life, and that's all you can eat. What dish are you going to eat for the rest of your life? 
probably spaghetti with San Marzano tomato sauce. And there is with big, Reggiano Parmesan cheese. See, now, A, there's a big difference between regular tomatoes and San Marzano's. And there's a big yeah. difference between regular powdered Parmesan cheese and Reggiano Parmesan. Good for you. So you like the good stuff, Frankie. Yeah, 100%. And since you're Jewish, I told you where my grandpa teamed up with the local mob uh, and got the KKK booted out of uh, Fremont mm -hmm. County, Colorado, who didn't like Italians and Jews. Wow. So they, we got rid of them. <laughs> okay. But they they do like marijuana there, so I'm going to give them, I'll give them a little bit of credit. <laughs> uh, Frankie uh, Spice Morelli, Frankie, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, and we appreciate you being on Scorch's PFG TV. And, and we'll send you some books if you want to give to your uh, viewers. We would Unless, love that. Just let your producer know, and I'll send you a box of eight. Okay. We love that, Frankie. Thank you so much for everything, brother. Thank you. You have a nice day. You take care. Bye. Frankie Spice Morello. That's amazing. Welcome back to Scorch's PFG TV. Just a fun dude. Now, two things. We will have copies of the book that we're going to be in. Mm -hmm. I think they should be in this week, so we're going to give them to some of the listeners. And Mike. Give it up for Mike Snow, by the way. The man, the man behind the curtain. Mike said to me today, I don't know how he knew it, and this ain't going to help our bromance uh, storyline at all, but Mike says, tell the truth, you were sitting in your bed when you did that interview. I said, no, wait, I think I was sitting in my living room. Oh, crap. I was sitting in bed. You were sitting in bed, <laughs> of course sitting. you were. And, and I, Mike has never seen my bedroom. Uh, Mike has only been in my house, I, I mean, one time, right? Three yeah. times. No, you have never been in my house, right? Uh, wow. <laughs> really? Oh, don't I feel like yeah, a douche I was gonna now. Say, where, are they hang, where are you guys hanging Holy out crap, then? Just so, in the car. Anyway. Uh, we're going to have more interviews like that. I believe the next interview we're going to have like that, his name is Jay Wosley. Jay Wosley is part of the TV show Ghost Adventures. Yes. Uh, he's been on the radio. He was on my radio mm -hmm. show many times. Uh, I believe we are taping the interview on Monday. We should have it within a couple of weeks. So we're going to have more stuff Sweet. like that. Give it up for that. Very strange. news this, this, this pre-taping thing is amazing. I'm, a Florida man says a spike in his blood pressure is what caused him to attack his wife. That's okay, right? Attacking sure. his wife? That's a good excuse. Spike in blood pressure? Okay. He's, he said he was working at a deli at the time, and when his wife came and pissed him off, he decided to take matters into his own hands. Did he grab a knife? No. Did he push her through a deli case? No. He did what anybody else would do. He took a whole salami out of the, out of the deli case. <laughs> And he hit her in the face with it. <laughs> Smacked her right in the face with Smacked her right in the face with a slummy. Holly, you don't have any sort of compassion for that because that happens to you on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. You wish. How much do you charge for a guy to, how much would you charge for a guy to smack you in the face with me? I would never let anyone do that to hey, me. Hey, Mike, uh, at Northwoods Rock Rally. We should take money for people to smack Holly with me. No, we'll from slap Jay you with the yeah. meat. <laughs> No one's clapping. Uh, clap for that. No. Boo. They ain't going to boo that. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it all over again. Get these people's attention over there. <laughs> we are going to have a whole bunch of people at Rock Rally. We're going to have them pay money, maybe to go to Scorch's Paws for the cause. Okay, yeah. maybe to go to Scorch's Paws for okay. the cause to go up and smack Holly in the mouth with some meat. No. Good idea, right? No. Yeah. No. Right. no. 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 Fired. Oh my God, I'm so glad this don't is being taped. Mike, you can add some sound effects. Yeah, don't be a dumbass. Okay. Yeah, don't be a dumbass. The rule, the one rule. Finally, a man in the UK is glad to be alive after he has sustained a broken neck, fractured spine, smashed ribs, blood in his lungs, and other horrific car crash like injuries. All caused, and I brought this up because I know you like these critters, all caused by tripping over his cat and falling down the stairs. Dang. What the hell kind of, what? When asked about it, the man said the cat just seemed to attack him out of the blue. Mm. Now the cat said, hey, O and A guys, get ready for this one. He had a perfectly good reason. Oh, God. But there you go. That's weird news for today. Mike, don't hit the jingle again. <laughs> Weird news about all of our family members, these other people and the companies. 
that are nice enough to be yeah. to give us the love to help us go every week. Yep. These are the family members of Scorch's PFG TV. We're coming right back. <laughs> Uh, hey, Barry and uh, Steve, you guys can come on up here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let me grab this. Good. Mike, I'm going to skip signs. You're about ready to be fired. Okay. So there's one. All that work I put into that? No, I won't. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I won't skip it because. No, because this is going to be short. I'll be fine. Uh, Holly, why don't you uh, sit here first? Oh. You okay. Can, yeah, sit here first. I thought you said to set and move over. No, but we're still doing something first. You guys can hang out oh, too. Oh, gotcha. We didn't. Talk okay, let that. me know what. Oh, anytime, right? Yeah. Okay. We don't have a mic. Yep. Okay. Uh, 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 seven signs you're about to be fired. Okay. Make some noise, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, listen. To become a family member, and we're always looking for new family members. You know what? It's this show survives on you guys. Mm -hmm. I email Scorch or Holly at ScorchOnline.com. And we will get in touch with you. We'll tell you how you can do it. We have a bunch of new family members coming on in like another mm -hmm. couple of weeks. Yep. June 1st, we have a couple of new family members coming on. So thank you guys thank for being part guys. of Scorch's PFG TV. <laughs> how you know, this is from my, my website that I love, linguist.com. Yep. How you know you're about to be fired. Have you ever been to, well, you don't even work. How the hell are you going to know if you're going to get fired? <laughs> I've been fired before. Have you been fired? Yeah, did in you feel high like, school. Did you feel like you were going to be fired? Mm, well, kind of, yeah, because I wrote my schedule down wrong, so I knew I screwed up. So I absolutely knew I was going to get fired. Just because you wrote your schedule wrong? Yep, so, I, missed, I missed one day. And they fired you? Yep. Oh. Yeah. So this won't be the first job that you've gotten fired from? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> okay, good to know. Uh, yeah, I never get fired at all. Unless I work at a radio station. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm That's all I've done my whole life. It's radio. But, um, yeah, this last one, I didn't know I was going to get fired. I knew that they, I, I, it kind of surprised me. Yeah. Although I did feel like an outsider. The whole time I was there, I felt like an outcast. Too, yeah. Because nobody knew how to deal with me. No. Because they've never had anybody like me. Uh, but here's ways that you can tell if uh, you think you're going to be fired or if, if you signs you might be getting fired. Your boss stops talking to you. Ouch. It yeah. is true. When, if your boss is talking to you every day, That's and my nice. GM at my last radio station I worked at, I should have known. Because she all of a sudden, we talked all the time, and all of a sudden she was too I busy to stopped. talk to me. And she, she just didn't have nothing to do with me. And I should have known then. And then, of course, when I realized that they probably stole from my paws for the cause thing, uh, that probably ruined it too. But we'll get into that another <laughs> time. Won't we, folks? Uh -huh. Look for uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, you stop getting deadlines. So if your boss stops saying to you, you know what, you got two, you got to finish this within two weeks. Oh, If you stop oh, gotcha. getting deadlines, you're probably on your way out because they're probably thinking, yeah, you know what, it's, you're not even going to be here when the deadline is. Well, exactly. If there's something you're used to and then it disappears, yeah, you should probably be a little scared about that. You're excluded from meetings. If all of a sudden you're part of meetings all the time. And all of a sudden, they're like, you know what, Raiden? We don't need you at the meeting this time. Raiden's our camera. Give it up for Raiden, our camera guy. <laughs> you notice how Raiden's parents give the most applause for him. Well, yeah. What <laughs> kind of crooked crap is that? <laughs> but yeah, if all of a sudden we said to Raiden, you're not going to come to our weekly meetings anymore, Raiden's like, weekly meetings? What the crap are you talking about? Exactly. Then, then you should worry about that. He looked, Mike, he looked a little you worried. missed it, Mike. <laughs> he smiled. <laughs> oh, he's smiling still. He smiled. Yay. Oh, my God, he smiled. He smiled. Oh, just, I jumped a little on my own ear. I wish I had confetti and all the crap because I, he smiled. Give it up for Rain again. We like those smiles. We weren't sure you could. Mm -mm. <laughs> now we know you're capable. Wow, man, good for you. Yes. Good for you. You're going to get extra two bucks in your pay envelope this week. Yeah. Uh, your, per your perks start to evaporate. And, you know, where I was, we didn't, we didn't get any perks because I wasn't in management and, and I didn't suck, you know. You didn't get the awesome coffee mug or nothing? I, I refuse. I don't give a crap. I don't care what kind of job it is, okay? I'm the type of person, if it costs me my job, it costs me my job. 
Yep. I am not putting on the knee pads to get anything from any company because you know what? You're just my boss. Right. Yeah. Shove it up your ass, right? Yeah, right. Seriously. Agreed. I'm not That's gonna, how I work with this guy. I'm not, no. I'm not changing myself. Or, or it's just wrong. So yeah. no. Finally, you've noticed strange behavior from your coworkers. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now I noticed at the end of my last stay, like I said, I didn't, I didn't realize, but I noticed that they were all avoiding me more and more. I used to say to T. Rye, my partner, all the time, "Is it weird? Do I, are people just avoiding me?" And she always said, no, they weren't avoiding me, but there's no doubt they were avoiding me. And once again, I think it's because of, and this is only my opinion, it's nobody else's, I think it's because they know that I know that they know that I know that they stole from Scorch's Pots for the cause, and I'm going to put them under the bus at some point soon. Thank you very much. <laughs> me? Bitter? No. I'm really not, though. I'm very happy that I've got this TV show now. And truthfully, I, it's not a karma thing. I'm, I'm not going to fully announce anything till one year. I got canned January 4th. Yep. Next January 4th, a year later, I'm going to explain everything. And I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to actually print out and post it, the copy of the of the, uh, severance. the severance package that, that they, they had the freaking balls to offer me. And you'll see why I'm going through yeah. it. I'm going through. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, man. So now you know signs you're about to be fired. And isn't it weird? I, Holly, a second ago, was sitting right next to me. Now I have two guys sitting next to me. One of them is Barry Cohen, and one of them is Steve Lashure. Lashure? Lashure. So they, how do you kind of pronounce it? Lashure. Steve Lazer. They are from the, oh, my God, here we go, the upper Wisconsin. Children's Dyslexic Foundation. Close? Center. Yeah. Center. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Good job. Now, I mean, lots of stuff I want to talk to you about because dyslexia is a big thing. Dyslexia is around, they say one in five people mm -hmm. have dyslexia. A lot of people do. A lot of people do. It's in, does it take, does it, are, are most of them discovered as a child or sometimes does it take to be an adult before? You know, until you're an adult before they even realize they have it. Well, there's a lot of folks now in school districts that actually have enough understanding and they can send kids to a place where they can be tested and verified that they do have dyslexia. Now, Steve, dyslexia, explain the disease if you can, because from what I understand, and tell me if I'm wrong or if I'm right, and then maybe you can also explain to me, and I know you're not a doctor, but you probably know enough to explain it. You see the last couple of things backwards, so you see... That's, that's not necessarily... Okay, see, right. that's what I want, so, I, so explain it. And I, I don't have enough of the training myself to be able to tell all the ways, but they do have uh, simulations that we provide for some parents and for tutors and for the public. Uh, at the dyslexia center in Eau Claire that uh, would show you what it is that the kids are going through. We're serving uh, elementary school kids up to high school generally is what we're serving. We, we don't, our biggest problem is we don't have enough tutors. No. So we've got a, a backlog of kids, maybe a list of 40 or 50 kids wow. that are on the list that we can't serve because we don't have enough tutors oh. to deal with the kids. This training. may sound like a really stupid question, and I don't want it to sound really stupid, but, and maybe not when you hear it afterwards. Can somebody have dyslexia without being able to read or write? Like, are you born with dyslexia and then it, it, it comes out? Or, you know what I mean? Or is it only something that, like, can somebody, can there eventually be a test at birth? saying this kid's gonna have dyslexia, let's give him a shot or something? Well, there is a hereditary factor there. Okay. So most likely the parents have dyslexia, but they had uh, overcome that some by being very creative. Oh. It, you know, a lot of the kids seem like they may be uh, been told that they've been dumb all the time because, oh, you can't read, and they're shoved off to the side in class because they're not able to read. You can do those words. Yeah, no, that's, that's not necessarily comfortable for them at all. Uh. But 
once they've found a way to overcome the dyslexia, the problem of, they're very creative. Some of those people are the smartest people in the world. And it is overcomable. Oh, yes. Is, is it easily overcomable, or is it, is it not as easy as people may think? Well, the way that uh, our group helps support folks with dyslexia is they give them a toolkit. It might take anywhere from a year, and it's probably longer than that, up to two years that the kids can be tutored in multi-sensory ways, you know, writing things in a sand, uh, writing things with a pencil, speaking and learning, and, you know, they go through a whole lot of things like the phonetics. And what are the sounds that you get with these groups of letters? Because English is really a strange language. Strange language, yes, Strange language because you could have deer and deer and deer. Yep. And yep. what does that really mean in the context? Yep. So. The, wow. the, the folks that know are available at our, uh, on our website, the uh, Children's Dyslexia Centers Incorporated, and uh, our group is the Upper Wisconsin. So. And we're going to talk to Barry in a second, but how long does it take, uh, and you can't give a number, but on the average, I mean, you can't give a specific number, but on the average, how long does it take to... Do you say cure somebody of dyslexia? Do you say to, to help them get through dyslexia? I, what is the proper phraseology of that? I'd guess that it's more like, what kind of a toolkit are they given so that they understand how the language operates so they can read themselves? Uh, we've heard lots of different stories about kids and families that have struggled with not being able to read, and that's one of the worst things. You know, I, I was blessed that it just came really easy yeah, to me, yeah. uh, and my kids as well. But it's, it's got to be really terrible for self-esteem for kids that aren't able to absorb that. And once again, this may sound really stupid, and I don't want it to sound stupid. Can dyslexia affect driving? Like, in, is is there anything? Does it affect anything? Well, you like got to read the signs. Oh, I, okay, but it sure. can't. But it can't really affect like other than, other than reading the signs. It's not going to affect I, the way you drive. I wouldn't expect that to okay. happen. No. Oh. So it, it's it's not an eye thing. It's a brain thing. Right. Okay. See, a lot of people would think it's a, because it has most people associated with reading. Right. They think it's an eye thing when in essence it's a brain thing. Well, so, so tell me again. So. You do promotions. I do promotions. I am the co-chairman of the Stephen E. Pruitt uh, Teddy Bear Golf Classic that we have at Wild Ridge in Eau Claire. It is on August 19th. It's always the third Monday of the month in August. It's a fundraiser that we have that the monies that we raise goes to stays right here in the Eau Claire area. Um, for each child that goes through the program, um, it takes a lot of money. So, yes, I have to go out and do a lot of soliciting for donations and monies. And we have some great sponsors. Um, Mike over here has got one of my posters. It's going to be on the TV or the program here. Um, with all that and said, so when we put a child through the program, it's about $5,000 per child. Oh, wow. That's something, though. That's yeah. crazy. And it is zero cost to the parents. That's good, too. And so, yeah, I'm out soliciting. I do about close to anything from 1,800 to 2,000 hours of going out and talking to people. I deal with locals, I deal with corporates, I do a lot of talking to corporates. Um, it's, it's pretty easy though to get sponsors for something like this, especially because it is such a mostly kid-related disease, if you will. It is. Infliction. But you also have to remember, we're in a tough times right now, too. So if a person can handle rejection, you just try again and you keep going forward. Um, not everybody can go out and solicit and talk to people and try and get something for a donation. If it's a money donation, that's awesome. Um, if it's a donation that we can use for our live auction or if it's for the raffles that's great this golf tournament is a whole one for a car 
on a par three package. Um, Osseo Ford from Osseo, Wisconsin puts up the car. Nice. And uh, it's very thankful for them for what they do for us, but we also have a lot of great sponsors who are on that poster as well that donate to the cause. Uh, before we go any further, give it up for Benjamin who went out there and told the people to shut the hell up! Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's really hard to do this show when we're at a place because they have other things going on. Yep, uh, we have our own little studio here, but sometimes, you know, we got to deal with some other things. So uh, now, so how can the average Joe, how can the average Joe make a donation to the well, uh, foundation? Um, there is my name. My name's on the poster with my phone number. Um, His shoe size as well. You my shoe size as well. <laughs> yep, definitely. Perfect. Um, we do, I do have uh, applications, or they can reach me by my email address. Very good. And one other thing, uh, when I heard you talk about it, we went to JNE Meets, and I, I met Barry. He mentioned to them that he was making matzo balls. And I challenged him. I said, I will challenge you to a matzo ball contest, because I make Aww. damn good matzo balls. <laughs> but then he said that he makes his with club soda. And I have to admit, hands were up. I think I lost that one. No, no, sound like, no sound like good matzo balls, Barry, but I'll still challenge you to a contest. Well, no, I, I think the matzo balls that you might make might be sinkers, you know, because you just use the plain old water. So what are matzo balls? Matzo ball is like... No, they definitely, they don't, my mom's used to sink, yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. Nope. Matzo balls is like uh, the Gentiles' uh, dumplings. Oh, okay. Are a little bit better. Did you just ask what's a matzo ball? Yeah. Yep. Oh, God. And I'm course, from the Midwest, the, honey. When you have the matzo balls, you got to have the Jewish medicine soup, which is chicken soup. Uh -huh. That's what you put in it. So, okay. but uh, now anyways, I know. See, you know, the, the, a good matzo ball, you got to usually got to follow by the directions what's on the package, almost to a T. But uh, you also have to make them a little tasty too. I like to put in my matzo balls. I put a little bit of cannabis. <laughs> I like to put. Eggs. That's good. I will put vodka. Awesome. Oh uh, and uh, he and, doesn't uh, drink vodka. He's a liar. Uh, what else would I put in it? Whiskey. He meant. No, not whiskey <laughs> and vodka. No, uh, no. I use the same thing. I use I use matzo meal, matzo meal, if <laughs> you will. Uh, eggs, water, oil, and that's it. Well, when I make mine for you, I'll just use a little bit of castor oil. <laughs> Yeah, oh. and, and that's why we're all done with the. I'm gonna get it right. The upper what is your name again? Children. Get off my call. The yeah. Upper Wisconsin Children. Yeah. Uh, it's Barry and it's Steve, and thank you guys for coming in. Thank we you. appreciate it. Now, let's talk one more time, at least right now, about that's Wicked good. Sweet Bake Shop in Kadah. Are we back to me? Yes, we are. Wicked Sweet Bake Shop in Kadah. First of all, uh, guys, we love you for being part of the family, you know. Um, we love you for the things you have. The freshness of your cakes and your cookies, uh, danishes, uh, breads. Remember, don't forget about rolls. Summertime is just around the corner. I would make a, a deal with them where you call them every week to get rolls for every barbecue you have. You will have the freshest rolls that you can imagine, but that you have to call the head for those. Uh, Father's Day things, graduations, things like that. A uh, Wicked Sweet Bake Shop in Kadat. Thank you, guys. We love you. Who else are we going to say thanks to? Uh, Mad Computer Services, LLC, right here in London, Eau Claire. Mad Computer Services. Mike Decker and crew, thank you. Hey, I Mike. remember and Mike was in here last week. He's mm -hmm. going to be part of Tech Talk every other week or so. Uh, he knows a lot of stuff about computers. Even if you think you know it all, and then all of a sudden something's going on in your computer, uh, you call Mike Decker at Mad Computer Services, LLC, and they're going to take care of it for you. We can almost guarantee it. So, Mad Computer, thank you. Uh, Dion, Shilka Flooring, thank you, too. Uh, uh, Shilka Flooring, uh, whether you're a business, whether you are a homeowner, whether you are buying houses, whether you're into that, you know, refurbishing houses, anything that you need as far as a floor goes, you call Shilka Flooring. You say, hey, Dion, I saw you on Scorch's PFG TV. I need some flooring. They got to hook you up. Shoka flooring, thank you, guys. Thanks, Dion. Damn. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to check out another pub crawl, see some of the bands, or excuse me, some of the bars that are going to be part of our live pub crawls coming up. We're coming back. We're going to talk to you about side hustles that can make you money. We're going to do a round of hey.
U.S. and today's special band from San Diego, California. Going back to a flashback from 2013, the band is symbolic. Live today on Scorch's PFG TV. Yeah. <laughs> just a couple of seconds, but before we do that, this is uh, really interesting. Here's another one. I found this on my site, uh, Lifehacker, mm -hmm. lifehacker.com. Uh, remember, this is the site that we talked about that it really does. It helps you out with things that it helps you get through things, maybe helps you make money, helps sure. you deal with things, helps you... Anything, Organize, whatever, yeah. Okay. it has to do with life. This one here is the weirdest side hustles that you can make money from. You can make yeah. real money. One of them is you can go around and you can sell yourself out as a pooper scooper. Ooh. So instead of somebody going into their yard and having to pick up the dog crap, you go to mm -hmm. the yard and pick up the dog crap. And supposedly you can make two to four hundred bucks per house if there's enough crap in the yard. Do you need you that? Dog. No, but I, I, I walk Tongo every day, many times a day, and I pick it up with the plastic bag I bring with me every single time. So there. Yes. Yeah. However. I'm not one of those people <laughs> that are like, oh, oh, the dog crap, they didn't pick it up. If it's not in anybody's way where nobody's going to step on it, I really don't have a problem with it. But if Tongo, if you go in front of somebody's house, if you've got a dog, you're walking right. your dog, you go in front of somebody's house, you better be picking that, pardon the pun, better be picking that crap up. You know? Yes, agreed. Another one. This is an interesting one. I've never heard of this. Do you have, and you may have some of this. Baby gear rental. It's because there's companies that rental that rent out baby gear. I wish I had had that okay. or known about it. But I was... instead of going through a company that rents okay. it out, you can do it on the side hustle and rent it for a lot less. Oh, you can that rent makes out sense. baby clothes instead of somebody buy. Hey, you got Ew. a baby having a, a communion or something. You got the what do they wear a dress? I don't know. So you have a communion dress that that you might be able to like use a used communion dress you can sell. That seems so. weird, but interesting. Here's something. And I know that when I saw this, I was like, huh, was this meant for me? Because you know what? I don't have many friends. You can sell yourself as a friend. Aww. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's sweet. It's, it says it's something a lot of adults discover much to their dismay. Being a grown-up can be incredibly lonely. Yeah. And I can't read anymore because I'm going to start bawling my eyes out. Uh, now, he sell like your that. hair. I've heard of that. You know? Sure. Uh, there was a girl that was uh, at the beginning of the night. They had a barber college graduation yep. out back. And there was a girl there with 
some of the deepest, darkest, most beautiful head of hair. I said, excuse me. And she first looked at me like, is this guy going to kill me? <laughs> and I said, no, I just want to say, you got the most beautiful head of hair. If you have nice hair, yeah. sell it if you want, because you can make really good money Oh, yeah, money you can. Wigs are the thing. Uh, sell your underwears. As long as they're worn or just dirty or what? Clean? Here you go. There are two websites. I've heard weird things about this. Two marketplaces. I had no oh my idea. Oh, God, of course there are. All things worn. Okay. And... Male things worn. Now, here's, let me ask you this, because I think you're a chick. Uh, some days. <clears throat> Do girls get off, This I don't want to be graphic or anything gross, Do girls get off on guys underwear like guys get off on. I wouldn't, but that doesn't mean that there's it's not right, women out there. Women don't, right? That's, isn't that sniffing strange? Sniffing dudes' yeah. underwear? No, I would never. That's weird, right? Have you ever sniffed a girl's underwear? Have I sniffed girls' underwear? Other than your own? Probably just to make sure I need to wash it or not, but otherwise I've never smelled another girl's panties, no. Mike, do you agree or disagree for 100? <laughs> he won't even ah, look ah, over Mike here. He's like, look over here. Good for you, Mike. Hey, did I actually give it up for Mike Snow, the guy behind the board? <laughs> give it up for Mike Beat Holly with Cause, me. Cause you know, Mike, you know what? Mike really has really helped a lot. We love you, amazing. Mike. You're the best. Uh, finally, and this is good, Especially when you go to places with big shows, a line stander. A what? Line stander. So if there's oh, a okay. long line, line, you stand in line so somebody doesn't have to. They text you or something when you're about yeah. ready to go in. A line stander, what a great way to make some extra money. Great side hustles from lifehacker.com. Hustling. Every day we're hustling. I'm going to put that down here and whip out this and say, hey, Ooh. Scorch, hey, Holly, PFG, love the new show. Get this. I've been suspended without pay for the rest of the week. What? I work for a very well-known large company in the area. Okay. A co-worker kept eating my lunch whenever I put it in the company fridge. Not cool. I decided to take revenge. I put laxatives in some homemade cookies. The employee got sick. I got suspended by HR after they did an investigation. Should I have been suspended or not? No. I'm thinking about getting a lawyer and suing the company. Yeah. Was I in the right or in the wrong? Definitely not I in the wrong. I appreciate your help. Stephen in Hall, Massachusetts, is my hometown. So there Bullshit. you go, Stephen in Hall, Mass. Uh, Holly, what do you think about this? It's BS. I think he should not have got suspended. Why? Because of someone who's worked in a place with many other employees where you have to share fridges. There's a huge note that says, do not touch, take, or whatever other people's food. But at least they figured out who did it. It doesn't say here there was a letter, though. It just says he kept eating his lunch. But still, though, I mean, where does he get his stealing his lunch? So, I mean, it's got to be in a community somewhere where he can take it for it, right? I guess that's uh, my... I think the only issue is it's the laxatives part that they're worried about. It's not right. the fact... So, so, so but, right, is that an attempt that somebody's, like... What happens? It's a laxative. Okay, though. yeah, it's but not what like, happens if the, if the dude that, that took the sandwich is allergic to laxative? Okay, fine. And, so, so in essence, but is the other guy getting in trouble for stealing his food? Should I have been suspended? I want to get to that. That I don't know about. I, I would say maybe a one day without pay. Sure, but a week is kind of okay. I don't know. Uh, but then again, if you got if I'm going to go forget about everything I've said so far. I'm going to say this, Stephen in Hull, Massachusetts. Your co-worker that reported you is a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's simple. a lady. Okay. Eh, eh, Stephen what if it's a lady? Eh, 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 shut the hell up and don't be such a pussy. Quit stealing people's I mean, phones. If he, did, no, if he did something really bad, so be it. But You know, I feel if it was like eye drops where it's supposed to do the same thing, then like you're really actually poisoning someone. They say if you put eye drops, I just watched a show about this. But if you're putting actual laxatives, you're like, you're going to shit your pants now because you ate my food. That it's a little different. <laughs> Just saying. You're fine with the laxatives. Don't listen to him. <laughs> now I know what to put in your food. Steven, oh, yeah, you don't eat food. Stephen and Hull, we hope we helped you I out. I like food. Don't touch my food. Remember, if you're ever in need of any advice, Holly will certainly give it out because that's perfect advice right there. <laughs> Email once again, Scorch or Holly at scorchonline.com. And thank you for another round of Don't touch anyone's food ever.
Bad computers is uh, is where I get my emails from because he keeps my computer nice and fresh and lovely. He needs to get my computer okay. and works. So you should bring a computer. I know, I need to, actually. Uh, Bad Computer Services, LLC, Mike and crew, they really do. they got a great company. Uh, they'll take care of your stuff. And once again, they're local. <laughs> Don't go to the big box place. Forget about the Geek Squad because, you know what, Mike can take care of everything they can and then some. He will. And it's right here in town, and they give you great deals. Uh, Bad Computer Services, LLC, thank you. Love you, Mike. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw in J&E Meats one more time again, just for the hell of it, because you know what? J&E Meats, we love you. We do, J&E e Meats, I don't know why I keep saying J&A. &E. J&E &E Meats, you've got all the stuff we need for the summer barbecues and then some. So uh, start getting it for the fall. Freeze it. It's still good. Yep. So J&E &E Meats, thank you. Uh, also, Common Collected Cannabis Company, although I'll go with Chickadees first to stay in order, right? Chickadees, give it up for Chickadees. Yay! Yay. Eggs Benedict, who last week we found out Holly likes Eggs Benedict because it has Holly sauce. Holly sauce. Oh, God. Which Love is, it. Most people call it hollandaise. But it's unless, Holly sauce. Unless you're an arrogant girl. Most menus, you will actually see it says Holly sauce. I've seen a bunch of menus with it in town. You show me. You, I will find one. I'm going to send it to you. We're going to put Mike, it on the Mike, have you ever show. heard it called Holly sauce yes. before? Never, Whatever. Right? Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, I can give you one. Everybody's Anybody going to Anybody else in the audience insane. ever heard it called Holly sauce? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shut up. One person is already called all these us. Whatever. One. And he's on the payroll. He's whatever. It's fine. Uh, so, chickadees, thank you. Uh, Thanks, Breakfast, guys. lunch. They, they have great hours. They're open in the morning. Whatever. I talked to them why they're not open overnight. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's the type of place on weekends the drunk college kids would go there. Absolutely. Uh, it was all a matter of, of uh, working, getting people to work the shifts or whatever. That used so, to be huge around here, and it's not much any uh, of it But left. you know what? Go in when they are open. It's mm -hmm. going to be the best uh, best meal you had. Chicken Eats Family Restaurant. We love you guys. <laughs> Common Corrected, what can I say about you guys? You're the best, man. Uh, go in and tell you. Tell them. Tell uh, Stacy and Tim. Scorch's PFG TV sent you. They got pre-rolls. They've got flour. They've got everything you need as far as CBD and the legal THCA stuff, that if you, it's, 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 you might as well get it there. It's the best you're going to get. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You can get it at a gas station now. You can get it at a grocery store now. That ain't the good stuff. You want to get